So let's get started. A very warm welcome from myself, Enrico Anakum. For those of you who don't know me, I'm a neuro coach, helping people to change their minds in order to change their lives. And tonight's training, so to speak, is about how to build your financial house in a way that will keep you wealthy for a lifetime. Right? This is extremely important. And I've come to see uh, with the kind of work that we do in cryptocurrency, et cetera, et cetera, how important this is. So if we say we want to build a house that will keep us wealthy for a lifetime, we have to define what the word wealth means. Wealth is about more than money. Um, wealth is about experiencing abundance not just in a monetary way but also in your own physical health also in the way that you experience the world in relationships and even in your spirituality so wealth is about all the areas of life to be happy healthy and wealthy right so but the financial part is many times the part where people get stuck the most to be able to unlock the rest. So please get your, your, uh, your notebook and your pen. There's going to be some important information that I'll be sharing with you. And you've heard me say this before, knowing and not doing is not knowing at all. So make this a part of you and make sure that you find a way to internalize it. Okay. I have to look at my notes now and then because it's the first time I'm presenting this in this specific format. Why do we want to build a house? It's because we want to make sure that um, in this metaphor of building a financial house, that we can weather the storms of life. Now, if I can ask you in the chat box to give me a few examples of what you think the storms of life could possibly be, especially when it comes to the financial side of things. Um, what can you guys think of? Can employment, unemployment be one of those storms of life? What else can you think of? Just put it in the chat box for me. Unexpected medical expenses, health, unemployment. Um, what about you know, retrenchment, unexpected bills? Lionel, I'm sure that is from your wife um, because the only way it's unexpected is, is if someone else um, Lazan is saying divorce, you know. Um, also, what about some weird pandemic virus? Could that also be a, um, a financial storm? Ben, thank you for that. Inflation, eating your retirement fund. You've used my exact words as I use it in the, in the other presentations. It's like inflation is a, is a thing that eats away at your retirement fund economic collapse we are living in such extreme times really that that is a very real concern is economic collapse or the collapse of certain currencies so this is why it's so important that we build this financial house of yours so to speak so that you can be present in the powerful moment without fearing about the future because the only thing that keeps you out of the moment is future fears and of course past regrets. So um, guys, for tonight, there's nothing that I'm, I'm selling and there's, there's no package, there's no sales talk or anything. Tonight is just about this mindset and a certain process, how to build your financial house so that you stay wealthy for life and weather the storms of life. Um, if you stick with me and you, you, you apply your attention, right? To, in today's life, we are very short attention span. Um, I started off in life with a very short attention span. Now we have Facebook and we have Messenger and we have all these things. But maybe honor yourself and focus on the content tonight and participate in the chat box. You're welcome to put anything in the chat box. Let's keep it, let's keep it alive. So let's start with the foundations of the house, right? How do we build the foundation? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if it works out. If I use the whiteboard, not the best 
sketch artist. So I'll make use of the, the blocks. Yes. Let's make a foundation. Right? How do you build a house? You start with the foundations. And Asia, as I go along, you're welcome to, to add to this. Many of this content, um, Asia is very familiar with and has also trained, maybe not in this, this format, but here we go. So the foundations of your house is really the thing that makes the car go. A car cannot go if you don't have petrol in the car. And cash flow is like petrol. So how do you earn income? You know, we can talk a lot about assets and retirement planning and all these things, but when your income stops, you have a problem. There's no petrol in the car, so to speak, to move forward. So the foundations of your financial house is really generating income. And there are four ways that we generate income. And they are, they are basically two categories, right? The first category is active income, where you work for your money. The second category is automated income. That's where your money works for you. So the first one, let me try and uh, write it out here. Let me get the text thing going and I'll put it onto dark blue. Make it slightly smaller. And maybe as we go through this, just observe yourself and just be mindful of, okay, this is how I'm earning income. So the first type of income is of course active and dependent. Guys, I might have some spelling errors here, but you will be gracious with me. Thank you very much. What does that mean? It means that I have to work actively for an income and I'm dependent on an, someone external, a business, a company, etc. The second type of, of active income is active and independent. Can someone think of an example there? That would be someone like a, let's say you work, used to work as a bookkeeper for a company that was active and dependent income. And now you started your own practice and you started doing bookkeeping for, as your own business. So you're independent, but this is still an active income where you earn money based on the hours that you sell. Does that make sense to everyone? Lost my chat box, by the way. All right. In terms of automated income, this is number, number three and four. Let's put that down. The first type of automated income is business. So let's go. Number three is automated income in business, right? And the, I, let me tell you something. I, my first, and, and notice how this goes through the seasons of life and how it links to your age. My active and dependent income, I was, I was a bit rebellious. So for me, it only lasted nine months. And I said, I'm not going to work for a boss. Um, I'll start my own business, right? Little did I know, it wasn't really my own business. I was just still working for my money, still actively earning but it was at least independent. At least I had the control. Um, Robert Kiyosaki is saying, you know, the guy from Rich Dad Poor Dad, is saying that you're, you only have a business if you can go away from it for a year and come back and find it at a better place. That qualifies as a business, okay? Not if you have your own bookkeeping shop if we, or practice if we now run with that example. What is the fourth type of automated income? It is, of course, investment, right? So the fourth type of income is automated through investment. And this is the most, the, the most highly automated form of income is through, through investment. 
where your money works for you. So number one and two, you work for your money. Number three and four, your money works for you. So what you want to achieve in life is to, to go through one, two, three, four. You can actually skip number two if you want. The, the, the thing that unlocks the next level is what we call surplus income, all right? So, but understand that for number one and two, that represents 97% of people in the world, right? Slaving away their time for money. Number three and four, that represents only between one and 3% of people in the world. And it is a choice. So some of you here are in your 20s, some of you are in your 60s, and it's never too late to start progressing through one, two, three, four. Okay? So what does it look like if that foundation, so, so this foundation, you can also see it as four corner, cornerstones. You can now look at your own um, income and say, all right, based on what Enrico is saying, how much, what percentage of my income is from number one, number two, if most, if you're employed, maybe a hundred percent of the weight of your financial house stands on this one column, pillar, cornerstone, active and dependent income. That is a huge risk that you are taking. Okay, that's a huge risk. Now you need to say, maybe let me start my own business or let me start generating active independent income. Let me look at investing in business. Let me look at automating my income through investment. At some stage in life, you want to get to where 100% of your income is generated and all the weight of your house stands on the, the third and the fourth columns right or those cornerstones okay so this is the basis because without income we can't do anything right this is the basis we have to start there now in order to start building the walls of the house let's get, go to to what i i've just called for myself section b we're going to build four walls maybe in the chat box can i ask you guys to just put the numbers that you are currently earning from if you're earning from one to four put one to four if you're just earning from one put one if you're just earning from two put two then we know just give me some feedback in the chat box and let's see who's here one one two four two and four hmm. okay three and four interesting well done Karen. um one and four sometimes two Okay, very, very interesting. Also, be patient with yourself. There are ways to fast track this. There are ways to fast track this. Many of you, one, one and two, there are ways to fast track this, and, and we'll speak about that. But there's also a thing of being patient and understanding um, that you will go through this process. You know, you learn the skills to be able to go from one to two to three to four. And tonight, as I'm speaking, I'm really standing on the shoulders of giants. I'm conveying content from um, Robert Kiyosaki, um, George, George um, Klaassen from uh, the, 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 the um, richest man in Babylon, um, Johnny Martini, um, these kind of people that are so good at teaching us how to become financially free and financially more abundant. So you'll pick up some of the principles I've just worded it. On my, on my own terms. Okay, so let's build the walls. Thank you for your feedback there. Um, it's, it's, quite, um, it's quite diverse from what I can see in the, in the chat box. That's very interesting. So let's, are you guys ready to build the walls? Let's do that. What color should I pick for the walls? Um, I'll go with, I'll go with orange. Okay. Now, That is not orange. Wait a minute. Undo format orange. <laughs> I'm still uh, learning with this. Okay. So what do you guys think the four walls are? 
we have our income and we know that we are progressing hello little one we know we're progressing from active income to automated income that is extremely important i really have seen that our biggest risk right now is one source of active income now in order to build the four walls what does it look like if you don't have the four walls in place um, it looks like desperation it looks like short-sightedness it looks like fear and i'll show you how to how to overcome that the the bricks in the in the four walls are monthly goals and the, the uh, well let me put it like that the goals are in months so your first goal let me write that down is one month it's not going to make sense right away but stick with me um, use a dark so it's one month of income right income then it's three then it's six then it's 12 24 and so on what we want to do with the walls is we want to create a cash surplus this is a this serves the purpose of three things it is a buffer right it is a buffer it is also a financial cushion right that when things go wrong this is your safety net so to speak and these four walls is basically how we keep our surplus now when i present the other webinar and i'll invite you to to the that maybe um you see if you can just post the the link that tiny cc um tiny cc next public webinar i've got it don't public. worry i'm you <laughs> know it by now <laughs> um on thursday evening i normally ask people how far are you away from your bankruptcy and 90 percent are zero months one month where they are literally if the income stops now next month they are bankrupt right and we we delve we make those those calculations and we delve a bit deeper in on, on the um on the on thursday night's webinar and we go into the practical tools of how to grow your income how to generate automated income through business and investment but that's not for tonight. But I just want to mention for most people, their surplus, their cash surplus is between zero and one month. Right? So your first goal is one month, then it's three months, then it's six months. So it's very simple to calculate that. You take your monthly budget, let's say it is 50,000, whether it's dollars or rupees or rands, doesn't matter. So, okay, my first target is to have a savings or a cash surplus of one month. That's 50,000. Once I've got that, the next goal is three months, right? And this is how you brick by brick by brick, you build these walls. Then it's six months. And you would be amazed to see how addictive it becomes when you start building that, that cushion, right? But here's the trick, here's the trick. What do you do with that money? How do you utilize it? How do you make sure it's safe? Are you gonna keep it all in South African rands? I don't. Um, are you going to keep it all in dollars? I don't. What, how are we going to go about, go about it? So we once again going to work with the number four. So we'll have four walls. And basically, let me write this down. What we can have for our four walls is firstly, local currency. Secondly, global currency thirdly real currency and fourth of course you would know me if those of you know me cryptocurrency is my favorite one okay so this is how i'm going to build the bricks lay the, the layers of my financial house of the four walls so i'm first going to save up one month i'll put that in my local currency of course we need to function in our local currency when i've saved up my second month i fill up the next wall the second wall global currency now this could be 
um, either US dollar or euro. Those are the two big global currencies. Yes, we can now go and speculate whether they will, how long they will still be around, will they fail, what are all the conspiracy theories, etc. But if you have diversified from local currency to global currency, then already you have done some risk management. Okay? We want to build strong walls. Remember, our purpose is to build a financial house that will keep you wealthy for the rest of your life. Right? Okay. See, I have a slight internet wobble, but you guys should be able to still hear me. Okay. Did my whiteboard disappear? No. Here. Okay, I can still see it. Got it. All right. Now, I'm going to give you a little bit of a trick in terms of how you can hold global currency. Right? In my case, I've just chosen the US dollar. You can pick whatever you want. Um, what I like is with the cryptocurrency exchanges, we have stable coins like true US dollar or US dollar tether, where I can take Bitcoin, which is international and decentralized and safe, out of the hands of the banks and the governments, and I can just exchange that to US dollar tether, right? Yes, there are some speculation in terms of how legitimate um, the, the tether coins are, but they are, you know, in terms of the scale that I'm working on and the bigger scheme of things, I'm pretty safe there. So I like to hold my global currency in cryptocurrency, but with a tethered or stable coin. Local currency, I want to give you a few um, pointers there in terms of how would you hold cash. So the one way is physical cash. The other way is if you are still paying off debts, um, a great place to hold cash is, cash is in a flexi, uh, a flexi bond where you still, so you are saving on the interest, but you are also now, you have the cash available, right? Because remember, this is your cushion. It's, a, it's your safety net. It must be liquid, must be liquid. This is everything that we talk about here, you'll be able to get it in a second, right? It's available. Um, the, the third place I like to hold it is in a 60-day deposit account. Why? I can still get it right now, but there's a little penalty. And the human nature there is like, mm, you know what? Let me think about this expense again. Let me think again about this investment. If I withdraw now for next week, it's going to be a little penalty. And this is what I love about a, a, a deposit account. It's a safe, low yield. It's a few percent per year, but at least there's a little bit of interest, but it's available, right? And um, you have to think about withdrawing. So that's how you can hold your local currency cash, physical cash, your, your flexi bond and a depositor account where you do earn a little bit of interest. On the global currency, I mentioned you can use something like uh, US dollar tether. And uh, as I always say, I'm not giving financial advice. Please don't take this as advice. Take this as part of your financial education. Take what you can use, what you don't use, that's also totally fine. You know, um, I'm showing you what I'm doing. Okay. The third one is real currency. Now, you might have wondered what that is. Real currency is the only money that really exists, and that is precious metals. Oh, someone is very fast. Sarah is very fast. Gold and silver. Okay. So, I'm not going to go into the theory there, otherwise we won't finish building our house tonight under an hour. Um, but precious metals has just stood the test of time. Okay, it's not so liquid. So for that part, you would have anything of from 10% to 25% of your portfolio. 
we do have some solutions where it is actually very liquid, where we can exchange the gold or the sil silver back to cryptocurrency, and I can have it in my bank account in whichever currency I want uh, within minutes. So those platforms are available. But precious metals gives us a long-term hedge, right? And remember this, we're building your net, we're building your the cushion, and um, there's a bit of magic to this that I'll tell you just now. And then of course, the last one is, is cryptocurrency. And there you can look at um, either the top, the top performers like Bitcoin, Ethereum, and um, Litecoin. And uh, there's a few, I mean, you, I like to hold Bitcoin mostly. And then I have a small percentage of what we call altcoins, right? Altcoins. Okay, so this is all cash. This is all available. And you just build those bricks. Those are the four walls. Local currency, global currency, real currency, and cryptocurrency. What I love about cryptocurrency, it's decentralized, it's international, it does not discriminate between country, race, and age. Um, it is, in my opinion, the evolution of money. So personally, my weight is more, if, if this were percentages, if it's 25, 25, 25, 25, personally, I, my weight is more towards cryptocurrency. But that's my personal appetite and my personal, um, the way that I like doing it. You can play with this. Some people will feel safe just with, um, you know, local currency and global currency. So you can play a bit with the percentages here and maybe research a little bit as to what is a good diversified portfolio. I'm not gonna be that specific to say, you must have exactly that and that percentage. Now, guys, most people stay at the foundations of their house and they stay with number one and two in terms of generating income. What did I say is the key to unlock and to start building the next level. How do we go from the blue to the orange? There's one word, can you guys remember? There's one word that is the key to start building. It is this simple. Oh my goodness, we can't read that. Let me take, I'll take a dark blue. It's really so simple. Surplus. We would like for most people, 100% income, 100% expenses. How do you create a surplus? I don't care if you only have a thousand rand extra per month. As long as you have something, you can start building, right? So there are two ways. The one way is to lower your expenses. The other way is to make more money. It is that simple. What is not so simple is the human psychology of how we, the more we earn, the more we feel we deserve, and the more we go into instant gratification. What we are building here is not instant gratification. It's delayed gratification through discipline. Okay. So you cannot start building if you don't have a surplus. Otherwise you will take food from the table. So you have to apply your genius mind to create a surplus. In other words, let's say I'm earning 100,000 a month and I'm spending 100,000 a month. What if I can cut 20,000 in terms of expenses? That means I have a 20,000 um, surplus. What if I can earn 120,000? It means I have a 40,000 surplus. Now there's petrol in the car to start building the walls. How do I build that wall? I start with one month of required household income. One month. So my first savings goal is 100,000. Let's say my, if my income, required income is 100K. Um, and then we progress. Then we build those bricks. We build the layers, right? Local currency, global currency, real currency, cryptocurrency. Once you've done that, and, and this will always continue. You will always continue 
strengthening your foundations. You are always continuing building stronger walls. And this is how you strengthen your financial house in the long term. A great way to also, um, something I teach in one of my other videos is the three bucket principle. It's a principle that's been around for very, very long. It's basically about saying that the three buckets of income, the one is survival money, the second one is investment and business, and the third bucket is for um, reward or risk money. So the extra income that you have, how do you utilize that? Then you can use the three, three bucket principle. If you want me to go into that a bit in a bit more detail later, I can, but for now, it's just a, a mention. Okay. So can you see that we've now, we're now building the surplus fund in different asset classes and already we can, we can weather quite a storm with what we have here. If we are always progressing more and more months of surplus, and we are strengthening our foundation. But the various, very obvious thing that shorts here of our house is of course a roof. Um, but before we get to the roof, I want to um, tell you about something that is very interesting that a few, most people miss. It's somewhat esoteric about this surplus fund. I'm gonna write it down. And it's basically the way that John D. Martini puts it. He says, this surplus fund is not only making you resilient financially and emotionally, giving you a mental cushion to say, hey, I'm okay. You know, if the president announces this or that, I'm okay. I even have some geographical freedom because I even have some Bitcoin in my portfolio. Um, I'm going to be all right. I've got some precious metals. I've got some local currency. I can get it tomorrow morning. Other than all those things, the mental resilience and the physical financial resilience, it does a very special thing. It's somewhat magical. This surplus money is also your money magnet. Why does... Um, Dr. Johnny Martini say that. He's a human behavioral specialist. This becomes your money magnet. Think about this. If you have 10 Rand in the bank, what are the opportunities that you see and perceive around you? You see opportunities worth 10 Rand or less. If you have 100 Rand in the bank, what are the opportunities you see? If you have a million rand in the bank, right? Yes, you've diversified it to the four walls. If you have a million rand, what opportunities do you see? You see million bucks opportunities. 10 million, 100 million. It changes your mindset. It changes the way that you look at things. And that becomes a, almost a magnet. If we know that everything is vibration, everything is frequency, there's a certain, there's a certain frequency about you, a certain um, attraction. And, and this surplus fund becomes your money magnet. It's, it's just, I've personally experienced this. It's, it's as if it's a magnet and, and money comes. There's also something to be said for money goes to where it is appreciated. Right? Anything in, 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 the na in nature flows to, um, from, a, from disorder to a more orderly system. So what this means is money goes to where there's order. If you've built a financial house, it means there is order and more money will come. So this is also your money magnet. Please, I wanna see the messages in the future Will you message me and say, Enrico, my money magnet is working. And it will only work when you start doing this. It doesn't matter if it takes you a year to get to a month surplus. Imagine you can get to 12 months of surplus fund, having three months in each of the four categories in a year, 12 months in 12 months, means you've 
earned double what you need and half of it you've parked in your money magnet. Okay. Um, I want to see what Esther is saying. For me, it's linked to our opportunity eyes. You look differently at opportunities according to your abundance awareness. Yes, and the opposite is fear. The opposite is fear. If I if I living if I'm living in lack, if I cannot see past next month, all my income is active and dependent. My friends, I know life is about more than just that. Right? And I really honor everyone here that is willing to invest the time in themselves to understand something new. So the next um, part, of course, is the roof. So let's draw the roof. Uh, Asia, while I'm drawing, do you want to add something to that? Maybe just to summarize these two parts. Absolutely. I encourage young people, and, and this is what you can add to what you're saying here. I encourage young people to start looking at uh, building something like the foundation from the beginning, because if you know about the four incomes that are there, if you know that there's active independent, active and independent, automated in business and automated in investment, and you can build on that to slowly, first of all, create a surplus. So somebody like Kiyosaki says, uh, saving is for losers. But the thing is, this scares a lot of people away from saving. The thing is to get that initial surplus, you've got to save 10% of, like you said, 10% of a hundred rand, 10% of a thousand rand. You've got to be able to start saving and building on it. So the fantastic thing about the analogy and the metaphor that you're using is to get the foundation right. And once you've got the surplus, you can start leveraging it into walls. So now in my mind, I see these little slaves in, in the desert building a pyramid. So they started by digging the foundations and that took I a was very long time. To say it's a pyramid, um, but I, then I thought it was dangerous. It's <laughs> dangerous. So back to you, Enrico. <clears throat> I like your idea of, of, of little slaves working working for us, and that's where your money starts working for you. You need to be a master of money, or would you rather have money be your master? Okay. Think about that very carefully, because. We have so many preconceived ideas and so much conditioning around how bad money is. But maybe make a decision that it is important for you to have lots of money so that you can do good in this world, so that you can look after your family, so that you can contribute to people around you. That's why it's important. That's why it's about more than money. It's about wealth. And wealth touches all areas of life. So you could imagine that, of course, our roof, what does a roof do for a house? It protects it. it. It protects it from the rain, from the wind, the storms. So it's all about risk management. And uh, many people will tell you and will agree that what makes you wealthy is not the upside of an opportunity. It is the risk management. The first rule of money, is never to lose money. The second rule of money is don't forget the first rule. It's that simple. So you need to have a risk strategy in place. Now that you've built a foundation, you've built your walls, we need to protect what you are building, right? And I'm just gonna throw a few questions at you that you can write down the keywords for. I'm not gonna put them on the screen. Um, but things to think about is what is your debt to income ratio. What is the percentage of your income that you spend on consumer debt? We also have to distinguish between what is productive and unproductive debt. It's also, it's very simple. Um, unproductive debt is an expense. Productive debt, debt is an income, right? That is an asset that produces an income. I'm not talking about productive debt. That is also a risk that you need to look at as in terms of productive debt is to see what the, in terms of the total net value versus the, the debt 
um, that is called a gearing ratio. How, how much are you geared? Right? What about insurance? If you look at the things that are important to you, maybe your car is important. Maybe it's important for you to get to, from point A to point B. Does it need to be insured? Right? Um, if it's not insured, if something goes wrong, and you can you replace it tomorrow? Do you have the cash available to replace it? If not, then insure it. Um, what about life insurance? And yeah, you know, I one of the things that really struck me is when I was at a funeral um, for one of my my dear friends, and she lost her, her husband very unexpectedly. The kids were still young and everything, and she came up to me and she took me by the side of my arm and I could just see the seriousness in her eyes. And she said, Rico, you need to make sure that you look after your family, even after you are gone, you know? And I listened to her and I said, let's make sure that things like life insurance is in place. And based on your assets, it's a simple calculation. You know, what does my family need cash flow wise to continue my legacy and um, the life that I want them to be able to experience, at least the starting blocks I want them to have. If something happens to me right now, how do I provision for that? Is it property? Is it a cryptocurrency wallet? Is it a life insurance fund? So we need to think about those things. Um, control. One of the things you need to ask when you make any investment, say, what kind of controls do I have? Can I make decisions? Do I have controls over the money? What most people do is they would rather stay blissfully unaware of how it works and give all the control away to a financial advisor. Isn't that true? Most people stick with just the one cornerstone. They stay active and dependent income. And the little bit of extra that they do have, they give that away because they are unempowered to make their own financial decisions. They say, I trust you to, to, to um, grow that fund for me. And as someone said here, um, 60 years later, or when you get your 60s or 70s, after 20 or 30 years of work, you find that inflation has eaten it up. So another thing about risk management is your mindset. How do you look at things? What does your financial education look like? Um, if you can write quickly, um, please, get this book, The Richest Man in Babylon. We actually give this book away for free on our Thursday evening webinar. Um, Robert Kiyosaki's books, Cashflow Quadrant, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. One of the most profound books for me um, was um, Dr. John Martini with the book's name is How to Make One Hell of a Profit and Still Get to Heaven. So those are just some of them that you can, can educate yourself with. Your financial education is part of your risk management because unknowns are your biggest risk. How do you learn what the unknowns are? Is you educate yourself. Okay. Um, as I mentioned, one stream of active income is a huge risk. And, um, you know, when you make investments, you now have to decide percentage wise, what am I willing to risk in an investment? How risky is it? And what is the portion, the percentage of that, what I'm risking to the rest of my house, all right? So you cannot go and dig out the foundations and take all the bricks and the risk, all of that. You have to risk, you know, what makes sense proportionally. So I see that when it comes to investments, you know, a lot of people take their survival money to make an investment. And maybe sometimes that's, that's necessary, but you have to think about creating the right financial discipline. And when you've done that, then you have the right to participate as an investor, right? Um, because you've built a house that will keep you wealthy for many years. Okay. If this is not in place, what does it look like? Have you guys met people? Have you met people? that can, they have these um, big stories of how they've made many millions and what follows, how they lost it, how they lost it. 
I'm sure all of you have someone like that that they know personally or via via. The thing about wealth, there is kind of three principles in wealth. It's the ability to create wealth. Okay, you can write this down. The ability to create wealth. The ability to preserve wealth. And to preserve wealth is about risk management. You can also look at structures, things like business entities, um, trust entities, which um, also oversees entities, tax havens. All of this is part of risk management. I think the biggest, uh, many, the biggest risk is what we are unaware of, and that's why your education is so important. So let's get to the fourth part of the house, um, and that is the fun part. That's the third part of wealth creation is you're not only creating and preserving wealth, but you must also enjoy your wealth. Isn't that something? Enjoy your wealth. Not one day, not at retirement, right now, um, but proportionally to what you've built. And let's call that the inside or the decor of the house. I'll make it a beautiful pink um, because it is really about enjoying. Okay, maybe make that bigger. Let's see. Let's undo. Let's get to text and size. Okay. Wow, that's very big. But anyways, the decor of the house is how do you beautify your life? How do you, um, what is it that you want to experience? How do you want to enjoy your wealth? All of this will keep you safe, right? And all of this will have you be able to enjoy it. And the most important point here is live within your means. Now, I'm telling you all of this because I've also made all the mistakes. I've also learned the lessons, right? Um, when, when people do this premature, they would live, live beyond their means. They would take money from the bond or take money from the credit card to make a lifestyle expense, to go on holiday, do this. I want you to have those experiences, but in a house that is safely built right then you can enjoy the holidays and you can enjoy the cars and you can enjoy the physical houses you can have all of that as long as it is proportional to your house you know that it's fitting it doesn't help if you go and buy a massive piece of art and it doesn't fit into the door of your financial house you know then you've you shot yourself in the foot so that is very important that you really enjoy um, the fruits of your labor, right? Because you've worked for it. You've worked for it. But go for the discipline and the long-term um, reward rather than the instant gratification. And this is so tricky because we, we want to um, keep up with the Joneses, you know. Um, we don't want to live within our means. And it so happens that I think most South Africans... 110 to 120% of their budget goes to debt, you know, consumer debt. It's not productive debt. So it's important that you enjoy your wealth, but in a way that it makes sense with emails. Is there anything you want to add to that issue before I go on to the last few points? No, I, I, I'm okay there. I can, I can maybe just expand a little bit on what you're saying about the decor. It, just think about how often you see a non-assuming house, but when you get inside, there's, there's very tastefully, proportionately done decor. It's not cluttered. It's not overwhelmed. It's just fitting. And I think that's the cherry on top that Enrico is talking about here. Mm -hmm. um, I once, one of my neighbors rented out little rooms in his, in his this was my previous um, property. Um, my neighbor rented out little back rooms. He, he actually converted his garage 
into these one sleeper rooms. It's like the lowest entry cost of, you know, rent, rent a room basically um, for students, etc. And at some stage, I started noticing <clears throat> there's this beautiful, long, sleek, black BMW that every now and then parks in front of the gate. I'm like, wow, who's this visitor, you know, gracing us with their presence, you know, they must be very, very wealthy. And at some stage, I saw it more frequently and I realized this was one of the people uh, renting that room, you know, and it was just so... Uh, what is the word? So not fitting, but obviously that person felt strongly that they needed to keep up with the Joneses and the impressions of looking flashy. At least they have the car, you know, but they stay in a, in a little one roomer and the car probably cost them four times what the room costs. So, so make sure that it is proportionate to, to what you really can afford because the peace of mind of having built this house, the ability to be present and to be powerful, not fearing about the future, that is worth more than anything that you can actually own like a car or something that gives you instant gratification. Okay, now let's talk a little bit about how to fast track this. And um, be before I give you just a few pointers, we'll almost finish there is I want to ask you, how do you currently feel about your finances? Think about it. Maybe is, there's one word, maybe there's more than one word. Are you feeling fearful? Are you feeling disappointed? Are you feeling unsure? Are you feeling unempowered? Um, how would you like to feel? You know, Would you maybe like to feel excited? Would you like to feel hopeful? Would you like to feel empowered, strong, certain, right? I see a few comments. Yeah, keep it coming. Let's see. Would you like to feel blessed? Guys, I apologize if my eyes are red. I use some studio lights and I think they take a toll on my eyes. Hopeful. Um, Donovan, unsatisfied. Um, calm. Yeah, Lene, that's beautiful. It's just to be calm and, and have peace, you know. Satisfied but not active. I get what you're saying. Or not active enough. So, now I'm going to give you a huge secret. And I'm going to say you better start feeling that way right now. Because let's say you're feeling unsatisfied. I'm just going to take an example. And you would rather want to feel calm about it. Ask yourself every day, how can I feel calm about my finances? How can I feel blessed about my finances? How can I feel satisfied? How can I feel empowered, powerful, excited? Because the more you ask yourself that question, even if you journal, you take a little book and you say, okay, let me see. How can I feel calm about my finances? My goodness, there's nothing. Tomorrow you try again and you again and again until you start seeing something coming into your sphere of reality. And this is one of the ways to fast track is to say, how do I want to feel about my finances? How do I change the script from dissatisfied to empowered or satisfied, from fearful to calm? This is how you do it. It sounds very simple and very few of you will actually go and write, but those of you will, will message me later and say, it, it's actually working, you know? Stick to it for a month, write it down, ask, because when you ask, you bring new things into your perception. Another way to fast track is to have a plan. You know, few people actually have a plan. Now, I think I've put most of, let me actually add this, and then you can do a screen grab before I clear out my, my drawing. Uh, let's do more text and we'll make this blue again, we'll make it slightly smaller. And we'll just say how to fast track, right? So to fast track,
first thing is a feeling. Emotions are very powerful. Second thing is a um, plan. Have a plan. Work out a plan. Plan the work and then work the plan. Um, the other thing is why. What is your reason for all of this? Tap into your deepest motivation. Tap into your deepest motivation. Say, why do I want to do this? Why is this important? If you tap into the, what I'm giving you now, we'll fast track the building. We'll fast track the building. Um, the other thing here is how can I use my talents? Right? How can I use my talents? towards building my financial house and achieving what I need to achieve. Um, a question that I like asking myself is how do I 10x? What I'm doing right now, how can I get tenfold the results? Giving your brain a bit of a challenge. The last and most important is self-development. My goodness, lost track. It's got a lowercase. Okay, anyhow. Um, self development. Remember what I said in the beginning? If you want to change your life, you change your mindset. And what also happens is through, when you change your habits, your financial habits, if you make this part of your plan or you build your plan around this financial house, you cannot not be successful, right? but it starts with your, your education. So make sure that you invest in yourself and you're welcome to reach out to myself or to Essia. We are both business and neuro coaches that help people fast track their results. All right. And please join us on Thursday evening where we look at the actual tools that you are using that works for us to achieve this, okay, to, to help us to build this financial house. So those elements will help you to fast track whatever you do. And the amazing thing is once you start, you may think, oh goodness, it's going to take me a year to just save up a one month cash surplus. I can't see how I'm doing, can do that right now. And I understand the desperation of that, but just start. Just focus on the feeling of what you want it to feel like. You will be amazed at how quickly things can change and how you will start fast tracking through this. Of course, the other thing with self development is mentorship. Many of my mentors are people, many of my mentors are books, right? We have so much information available to us. So, that is how you build your financial house so that you can stay wealthy for the rest of your life. Creating wealth, protecting wealth, and enjoying wealth. And as we said, it's about way more than money. Money is just a resource for you to unlock your youth. So before I open up for, for questions and um, finish the recording, I do want to say that the reason why this is so important for me to communicate with you and um, it is my first time I'm communicating these principles. Some of them I have before. And I'll still practice because I want it to get through to you. I want you to start applying it. When you become financially free, and as you become financially free, you start living your divine potential. And that's what I love seeing, is to see people step into their unique, divine, creative purpose. That gives me a lot of satisfaction. And wealth creation is one of the ways to, to un unlock that. So thank you very much for myself, Enrico Anakum, and uh, Essia that's co-hosting. Let's open up for questions. Let's have some questions out there. Thank you very much, Haupt. I see what you're saying. 
Rainer oh, Botmar oh, saying, oh, I want to 10x my assets and worth. It logic, so fantastic. You see, the logic mind kind of um, kicks against the whole 10x thing, right? Eh? Of course it will. <laughs> it's the it, it's the it's the little voice again that comes in and says, "Are you crazy? How can you do that? Who do you know that's done that? Wherever has that happened?" And you just got to shut that voice up, muffle him, and say, "Uh, uh, I'm going to do the techniques that Enrico said. If you start writing a journal, uh, and use one of the simple principles that Kiyosaki also teaches, don't say I cannot afford it, or don't say I cannot 10x." Say, how can I? Enrico used okay. it tonight. Yeah. How can I do something? As opposed yeah. to I cannot. Because cannot shuts down the thinking. It says to the yeah. logic, dead end. But if you say, how can I? You leave the subconscious to think about it all the time. Very, very true. I'm seeing, I'm saying it was very valuable. Uh, it's a pleasure. And is it worth buying Kruger? Kruger Rands in gold and silver as real currency? Absolutely. There are more efficient ways which we started to explore in our team and which we will give, we, we, might, we might soon present on that, we will see. Um, that's linked to cryptocurrency where um, I can buy a, a cryptocurrency coin and I have an audit trail that there's also the precious metal in a vault for that, I can exchange that. Or I can pay ACA in in my cryptocurrency coin and you can exchange for gold and silver if you want. So that makes it a bit more liquid. If you don't have other options and you're ready to buy, um, there's nothing wrong with, with um, Kruger Rands and, and silver. Uh, you have to consider things like storage. You have to consider things like the liquidity. It's not that liquid. Um, but if that's the only options you have, you can go for it. But you want um, just speak to us. We can show you the other options that are more liquid, so to speak. Um, Renata is saying, do you build up cryptocurrency to get your 3, 6, 12, et cetera, per month? I'm not sure if I understand the question correctly, but I want to make sure that I'm building all four wall, wall, walls. Sorry. <laughs> I want to build all four walls equally, right? based on the percentages I've decided. So let's say you decide a quarter local currency, a quarter global currency, a quarter real currency, and a quarter cryptocurrency. You put your first month of savings into local currency, then global, then real, then crypto. And then you start again. When you aim for three months, then you fill up the local currency level to three months. Then you fill up the global currency to three months. And you, you, you just keep building those, those layers of bricks, so to speak. Um, feel out what percentages work for you. The, the principle behind having the four walls is so that you have less risk in one currency. We've seen what happened to the rand. Um, the US dollar can also inflate highly. You know, we, we don't know. Um, cryptocurrency is volatile but it can also bring lots of growth, you know? So that's why we just diversify into the, into the four, but the four together creates your, your cushion and your money magnet fund. I hope that answers you, Renata. Is there another question, Esia? I did see um, another one about a specific trading coin. Adonia, are you familiar with a yellow coin? A yellow trading coin? Uh, no, I'm not. no, me neither. What the principles here? Um, yes, absolutely. If you're not familiar with it, you're welcome to send me information, but we won't discuss it here now. Um, but I'm, I'm willing to look at it. Um, but this is the principles. We need to follow principles, and then we can, then we can see right what fits into my financial house. What is going to help me build? What's going to help me invest? What is going to help me generate automated income? All right. Um, Morne, once again, that is project specific. I'm, I don't want to go into project specific stuff tonight in terms of what specific platforms that you will have to join us for on Thursday evening. 
Um, Peter is saying, I appreciate that you help with people's behavior, but I do want to add that your strategies can be combined and then also the good financial planner. Yes, definitely. I, um, I do, I say the financial planners that are here are the good ones. Um, the ones that are not here, um, hopefully they have good strategies. I know a lot of financial planners that really are worth their salt, you know, or worth their, their, worth their weight in gold. Um, what, when I mention the financial planners, in terms of, I mentioned the typical traditional strategy of staying financially unempowered and trusting my money to an external person, whether it's a financial planner or a company or whatever. I have a problem with that. I don't have a problem with financial planners. So I totally agree. Um, financial planners are good with understanding the numbers and good with um, understanding, you know, how to make those decisions for. Um, risk management, life insurance, those kind of things. So thank you, Peter. Um, if you are a financial planner, you are very welcome. Fidesz is saying, can you make this available um, as the recording? Yes, I'll put it on my YouTube channel. So on YouTube, if you're not subscribed to my YouTube channel, go to uh, search YouTube for practical abundance. This is my idea is this abundance available for all of us. How do we make it practical? You know, abundance is like a, excuse me, abundance is a divine concept. It is godly, it is divine, it is in nature. We see abundance everywhere. Um, but how do we make it practical for us? How, why does so many people stay stuck and with a scarcity mindset? So this is part of making it practical. So I will post it on the Practical Abundance YouTube channel. When you subscribe to the YouTube channel, there's also a bell button to the right and you can choose whether you want to see all notifications or not. I don't post that many videos, but if you hit the bell button and you choose all, every time I upload a video, you will see it. So that's how I will distribute it. Thank you, Tines. Tines is saying that the YouTube channel is a treasure chest. That's great to know. What else do we have? Um, thanks a million guys, much needed seminar, power pack info, well done. Have a great evening. It's just a pleasure, Robes. Um, it would make me happy if you guys implement this. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's it. Oh, here's one. Um, how do you feel about the principle of each one teach one? Is that correct? Each one teach one. Um, I'm not familiar with that principle. I'd like to know a little bit more. And um, you're welcome to contact me. Do you know what that is, Isia? I'm not familiar with that. It sounds a little bit like paying it forward. Like no. what, if you achieve something, teach somebody else to achieve it as well. It's my assumption. I'm not familiar with exactly what she says. But it's like paying it forward. So that is like tithing. It's the the principle the biblical principle of tithing each one teach one also maybe something like um, um, conveying the the knowledge you know in terms of what we are doing here tonight is is conveying knowledge that you guys can apply and it's not theoretical it's stuff that we've learned from from practice and from making mistakes and from having successes so um, it's a it's practical knowledge that you guys can can implement Hendrik is saying thank you, very interesting. It's a pleasure, Hendrik. And um, this Rainer is saying this method of building financial health possible to reach my 10 year goal in two years or less. Rainer, go back to the recording and, and go and look at the fast track method. So, this is so personalized for each person, it will play out in a different timeline. There are people that start and say, we're not gonna even start with a active income. We're gonna start as investors. We wanna start in that quadrant. That is doable. Anything is possible. So yes, two years is possible, but you're gonna to have to apply those principles to fast track and really build a proper money magnet to be able to, to do that. But anything is possible. Okay, everyone, thank you so much. I wish you all Just the- quickly, uh
Apologies, then you could just quickly each one teach one is based on an American African American proverb that's about spreading the knowledge. It goes back as far as when slaves in America were not allowed to learn to read, about those that did lead, learn to read were spreading the knowledge. So this is exactly how you nailed it. It's that's what it's about. Great. Well, there you have it. It will be available for free on my YouTube channel. Um, so each one can teach one. <laughs> all the success, all the abundance. Thank you, Essia. Have a great evening. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Oh, you might want to screen grab the drawing if you haven't done so. I was just about to clear it. I will save it in any ways. I've saved it. There we go.